Breaking news. Breaking news, bro. Breaking news. What's breaking news, bro? Breaking news. I'm just seeing the update from Jacinda today. Uh, and Jacinda Ardern announces apology for dawn raids targeting Pacifica people in the 1970s. Ooh, wow. That That's do we, about do we all, time. I was going to say for the uninitiated, do we want oh, to give yeah. a breakdown on what the dawn raids were? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For bread sake. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so uh, I'll read what she said. Uh, so Jacinda had to say the Dawn Raids were a defining moment in New Zealand's history, uh, and the emotional harm caused by them remains etched in the living memory of those who were directly impacted. Communities at the time felt targeted and terrorized, and there is clear evidence the raids were discriminatory and have had lasting negative impact. An apology can never reverse what happened or undo the damage caused. But we can acknowledge it and we seek to right a wrong. So, wow. um, just for context, in the 1970s, after, uh, after I think Polynesians and Maori fought um, the World War um, with New Zealand, uh, they saw a immigration uh, problem, and uh, Robert Muldoon um, ordered police officers to go and check visas, mm. right? Um, particularly uh, in Ponsonby um, and around around the port, close to the port where a lot of our Pacific community was, um, and they'd go at five a.m. Um, and bust pretty much bust into houses and try and. Mm. Um, do visa checks. Yeah, mm. and, and pretty much do visa checks. If you yeah, didn't have your visa or passport, they'll oh, send you... you yeah. Send you packing. Yeah. yeah, send you packing. Maybe not even pack your bag. They might just mm. take you back to the ship or the, the plane um, and pretty much take you back to the islands. Um, yeah, uh, I think that was powerful what she said. You can't undo the damage mm. of that, mm. uh, but acknowledging it to right the wrong end. Yeah, I think this is... This is something I don't know. Long overdue. Yeah, mm. long overdue, eh? And I think to add to that because um you gotta remember I think it was in the around the fifties, nineteen fifties, no one was doing these factory jobs mm. and like um so um New Zealand opened it up to like pretty much style more and all our Pacific Island nations like mm. Um, there's work there's work, work here, here. Mm. come yep. you, can, you can live here blah blah and all all of our people came especially um yeah all of our people came and they worked they did all the crap jobs but they were all staying around that area and then got to the 1970s um i think they were going um there was hardly any jobs going around and then so islanders were getting the blame go send them back they're getting they're taking our work and so they put on that rule, like um, mm. immigration rules. and But they, we had overstayers from America and England, but mm, it was yeah. only Islanders yeah, that were, they were getting targeted, targeted, targeted to have those actual dawn raids with a break yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Just like you'd see in the movies where they go and like break into a house like unexpectedly, mm. people don't know, and they just raid the house. It was really sad, eh? And we hear some of the stories from the actual people that lived through it. Man, it was, it was bad. They had to like... All the neighbors had to hide each other, or they had to like jump the fence, and, um, and it was a good time. And that's that's what birthed the um, like the Polynesian Panthers, yeah, um, and they really fought for um, our people and trying to you know be that voice to a group that was um, marginalized. Mm. And so, like when we hear about this apology and the fight that our people have been trying to do for so long it's about time mm. um but i hope it's not a political um mm. move mm. yeah um but yeah i think the mm. people have spoken they've done petitions letters and um, yeah look forward to what this looks like yeah, yeah. It's, re yeah it's really unfortunate like what charles say like in the 50s, 60s, Robert Muldoon, New Zealand offered jobs because a lot of the Kiwis mm. back in those, those days didn't want, didn't want to they do that kind do of so-called dirty jobs. So, mm. Oh, no. 
so they had to find other people and so they thought oh, okay the islanders were, were quite happy to come to new zealand and migrate to new zealand and do the so-called dirty jobs because you know the, the new zealanders didn't want to do it and so what had happened is that because there was an influx of islanders and then they were taking all the jobs and it was flourishing the, the jobs and the economy and, and money was really good for back in the 60s 70s and what happened like charles was saying because the jobs were taken and hey you're taking our jobs so they had to put up like a cap like oh wait a minute these guys are taking our jobs and so that's when the kind of the rights not the rights but the dawn raids kind of happened and so yeah then you had a bit of a, a mix it in with racism Mm. And ignorance, and then yeah, it was a really, very really sad time. Like I, I, I say that because of my dad, my dad got caught. He got caught in the um, dawn raids, and he had to get the door put back to Samoa. Damn. But he was married. He was married, and um, and his wife at the time, his first wife, had, had a child. Uh, was, was pregnant, and so he was deported back to Samoa. And so what had happened that his first wife, you know, had a child and. Remarried and he never came back, and, and he, he, did, he, you know, he didn't come back to her, but he did come back. Uh, I don't know when he came back, but he came back and then started a new life, and she started her new life with her new husband. And so, oh, oh, all that kind of stuff, eh? And so, oh, but it's, it's, it's a lot of sadness because like a lot of people, and they had like um, untold stories in it. Mm. With, with, with Felix, was, Felix was in the, he had a lot of the islanders having all these, these secret codes and. You know, to, to warn each other, oh, no, you're going to hide. Mm. You know, or they'll ring up you know, a certain um, number of, of rings. They know that went to hide. Yeah. Yeah, and so it was, it was a very sad time. Not only, not only for the Pacific people, there were a lot of good New Zealanders, you know, Balangi, Pakias, mm. who were really trying to help. They felt mm. for the islanders and, and would even, um, even, um, like... So they're the, hiding you know, the kids there in, in the classroom? Hiding the kids. They would have... Wow. Um, these wooden boards where they hide kids and teachers would, would hide kids because the new immigration was coming. So, oh my gosh, and they would risk their own jobs mm. to help these Polynesian kids. And so, you know, it's, it's sad. It's sad that the government couldn't went down that route ra- ra- road with a little bit more doom. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, real, real dark time for our, our Pacific people at that time. It, sounds, yeah. it seems interesting. And something I've just picked up is you're saying they live in like Ponsonby, like that really mm. nice mm. area of the yeah, 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 yeah. So they get pushed out from there, I'm guessing where? To out south or something? Otara and... Yeah. yeah south because south that, that would have been yeah. prime real estate. I mean, you're sitting, you know, not far right from the city, the city and yeah. next to the water. And if you look at those places now, they're all super rich, you know, really, really mm. wealthy areas. Mm. And so the, the polys that came over... Were they living in those areas yeah. and then they got, uh, when the dorm raids came, they got pushed yeah, out? Pushed out. Are you looking at Ponsonby, Grey Lynn? Fuck! I don't know, man. It's it all, like, <laughs> all the islanders were congregated. And yeah, a lot of them. Oh, once they. Yeah, yeah, just a whole different. Yeah, that would have been a whole different. I mean, thing. South Auckland, you know, there was a lot, a lot of land and then they started selling the dream. Um, Come get your first house and mm. well, there's cheap houses out here. Mm. And it was real cheap and then everyone started buying homes. And, like they all left <laughs> um, Central and came to South Auckland and then Yeah. What's that word again? Well, gentrification. Gentrification, gentrification, yeah. What's yeah. happening again? Mm. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What's that word? Gentrification. Gentrification. Yeah. Like Gen- gentrified. Gentrification. Yeah. Being gentrified. Um, yeah, uh, being in a part of, like, he, like, in the Panthers, it was, it was buzzy because it was kind of a rollover effect of doing the doco for the Pacific Untold Stories, plug Pacific Untold Stories, free, um, thank you Radio New Zealand for, um, telling these stories that need to be told, um, episode one's about the Dawn Raids, um, so I was grateful to play Tingy and that, Shefu's dad, um, reenacting, um, how they'd go to the politicians' houses and dawn raid them. <laughs> you know, they'd go with their loud, oh, loud hailers and um, cool. with their flashlights and say, where's your visa? Where's your visa? Yeah. Where's your visa? Oh. Show us your um, passport. And then with, the, yeah, with that language. Um, and then to be on the other side of the TV series that's coming out later um, and hearing the stories from the actual Panthers, from William Ilolahia. Mm. The creator of Polynesian Panthers and seeing him and on the day one of filming he gave us his blessing to like tell the story wow. like to tell the story of um, 
you know, we're all Panthers, you know. 50, mm-hmm. There's 50 years since, since, since 1970, um, and this, this is the time, like, um, thank you guys for, for living through us. I mean, yeah, for for telling our story, you know, mm-hmm. and just bringing it up to light. <clears throat> um, and there were moms that had to hide their ch- uh, like children in fridges, like, like babies in fridges, like the, the extremes of this was like bloody crazy. Eh? And, um, yeah, <clears throat> just, just seeing, um, like scribe's dad came into set one day, um, gave us blessing, like just, just to be around, just to um, bring that wide world. And you could just feel like that unresolved, um, mm. pain kind of like mm. slowly, um, coming, coming yeah. together or like coming, just bringing that wholeness and, um, healing healing to to them you know that uh, face that 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 reality because mm. yeah like they like and it's just evident in the mall we're mm. natural we're natural fighters and we've got martin luther king and them up there fighting um for like being the resistance against the system and colonization um gandhi um where us polynesians have been doing it since early 1900s yeah um the mall movement um and just like it's like a repeat um helen clark Apologizing for the for trying to colonize um, Samoa, and apologizing for um, for all of that war and um, yeah, and then now just in the island apologizing for something that happened here. Um, yeah, but I'm just grateful to be a part of the voice, yeah. eh, mm, the voice of change, yeah. and I think just um, believing in the new narrative that that we are, you know, we aren't um, stereotypes, mm. you know, like. You see South Auckland, and I think gentrification is still happening today in different ways that we can't see. Um, but I think just raising that, keeping that conversation going um, will we'll continue to help us critically think. And yeah, grateful to be a part of this generation that's you know open about um, civil rights and talking about change. Because yeah, man, if we don't stand up, who's going to stand mm. up for us? Yeah. But you look, you look at the men, look at those men who stood up. You look at um to Paul Tomasisi, to Paul Tomasisi Leo Lofi the third, and then you look at what Willie William yeah the leader mm, of William, our, yeah. yeah, and he was only twenty yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and they, like, the, the cool thing about these these guys they were young men who were educated but mm. they, were, they weren't afraid to um to speak their minds eh? mm-hmm. you know and uh, that's why I think like as as men or even as young men we have no excuse mm. to not not succeed eh? like mm. for or to stand up for what is right and. Yeah. And the moral values of it, but look at these men who, um, and you just mentioned um, Martin Luther King Jr. You know, even before him, he was who were the very first um, individuals who started a, uh, what civil rights was was the um, Tupoutu Masisi Samoa mm. before him before that, and so you look at the 1900s, and the Mao movement was the first actual peaceful march back in Europe, wow. yeah, yeah, in Samoa, yeah, it's in Samoa. So the mole, the mole, yeah, it's in Samoa. So the mole means mole means resolute or resolved or opinionated, and um, the motto of Samoa back in the days it was, it was all peaceful. It was a peaceful uh, protest, mm. no, no one, no, not non-violent. And so what, what? And so the motto of Samoa back in the days was what? Samoa, more Samoa. Yeah, Samoa, more Samoa. Samoa for Samoa. It's for mm. Samoa people. And so obviously you had, you had people come in, they had German, uh, Germany, you had America, you had England come and try mm. to colonize mm. Samoa, these, all these nations, big nations would come in. But you look at the re- resolution or the, the, res- um, the resilience of Samoa and, and these men, and you think of Tupoto Masisi. And so what, the whole story of, of, and they call it the Black Saturday, yes, um, and mm. Felix said it. Helen Clark apologized 2002. It really, you know, colonization, but also more so for the influenza. In 1918, because of how many people, um, because someone from New Zealand came and, and they docked, there's a ship there in the waterfront, brought the influenza to Samoa, or the Spanish flu, and hundreds of thousands of Samoans so died. So a quarter yeah, yeah, yeah. of the population. Yeah, so they, they died, and then, so they finally apologized. Yeah, and so, world. yeah, so Helen Clark apologized 2002, apologized for what had happened, because no one acknowledged, hey, from someone from New Zealand brought the disease. Mm. And um, infected all of us. Yeah. You said it. You start telling wow. us to go back home. Does that in your country? <laughs> yeah, which is just... we're all immigrants except for them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Cause the um, don't read stereo. They'll see brown people and then hit them up with your visa. Yeah. Then they'll hit up the Maldives. Yeah. Show me your passport. 
Hey, you're hitting up the person where they should be asking you, where's your passport, you know? Yeah. Like, you're the visitor, this you're, up, you're the oversteer here, yeah, uh, right? But just because you have words and, you know, laws that that somehow entitles you to authority over, you know, mm, society. Mm. That's crazy, it's messed up. Yeah. Well, it just makes me think about uh, Harold comments at the moment. Mm. Just like, well, what are you saying sorry for? Like, oh, uh, there's it? other issues more important than, than this, this apology. I was going, wow. Oh. Oh, but see, there's that a relation because people that. are like saying there's current issues of like housing and poverty that we need to address. Mm-hmm. And I was going, hey, a lot of what had happened before affects the mm. way our people are living today. Mm. And so. Um, yeah. We need. There needs to be reconciliation. There needs to be some more. There needs to be. It's a start. Eh? Yeah, it's a start. Mm. And all those people that are on the comment section that they know Jack. Okay, learn your fucker, Papa. Yeah. So that, that was someone um, commented on on Instagram because I was like, uh, I was like, yes, reparations. Cause I commented on the apology mm. um, letter from. From Benji Timmy, shout out. Thank you for leading that us. Um and then yeah, I was like, yo, reparations um ASAP. And then uh some guy goes, Reparations, we should start with reparations for Maori, Maori land. I was like, hey, this is just a, a seed planted so that we get a foot in the door and mm. it, it becomes a regular thing that we can um start, you know, voicing our opinion. Um but I think there's that like differentiation between Maori and Pacific Islander. New Zealand's still an island, like technically we're still Polynesia, you know, like so we're still like together mm. kind of thing. But yeah. mm. I think just because I don't know, Maori might might have had a, di- a bit, you know, different um, here to how we had in the islands. But you know, we're all one family, man. Mm. We're all brown, same color. So mm. yeah, keep keep it up. Keep it up, yeah. Keep it giving, mate. Keep it giving. Did you see that? Um, the pe- the the Germans try to the New Zealanders try to tell the um ma- ma- like strip Makais the chiefs of um Samoa from their titles, um so that it'll it'll eliminate the authority in Samoa, and then they'll send like the head like the head leaders overseas out of Samoa so that they try and diminish the spirit. Mm. Um, and then one of the guys, Nelson, Olaf Nelson, yeah, yeah. Um, came to New Zealand and then met a guy, met a Maori guy that taught him how to fight against the crown even even more so that he, went, when he went back to Samoa, he, he took those same blueprints and then um, started fighting even more, oh, like, yeah. more different that's, strategically. That's mad. Yeah, so, so funny. Yeah. Man. But so sad that Olaf, 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 Olaf Nelson, oh, they, you're right, Olaf Nelson, they brought him to, they, they, brought, well, they took him to New Zealand. They took him. They they imprisoned him, and so he was in prison. He was in prison, and so for what? He, yeah, because what was he? He was half someone, half someone. Mm, I think I see. German, oh, sure. German, Dutch, was it? Yeah. So he came here. He, they imprisoned him, and then I think they he, he came back, and then what happened with the mole? The guys, two guys, were coming from were in, New, in New Zealand, in prison in New Zealand. They came, the waterfront, and then the mole to poor came with. Oh, okay, let's have, let's go have a peaceful uh, protest. These guys are coming back, and then the cops or the New Zealand police said, "Oh, they'll keep an eye on these guys just in case something happens, or a ruckus happens." And so, what happens? They go there, and then what happens? They they get provoked, and then they They're kill, kill, kill yeah, yeah, yeah. They provoke these guys because um, they're there to see their friends come back from New Zealand. Mm. They get provoked, and what happens? Which is really sad. They get provoked to the point where I think one of the police does something, and then um, one of the guys in the mall, like, yeah, he clubs him to death. And then what happens is that they have, like um, the soldiers, they find out and they have a, well they have a, like some sort of a machine gun or gun and start shooting, in this this building that will kind of like a parliamentary building, and so what happens they get killed, yeah, which is yeah, which oh is uh, yeah, this way the Tupu gets 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 killed, which is really sad. Mm. Yeah. And his last words, eh? Yeah, his last yeah Tupu get, yeah he gets killed. His, his mate dies first. The sad thing about it is that Tupu runs to the front of the line to say to other Samoan guys, Hey, yeah, old pisa, old pisa, yeah, feel it move. Hey, don't, don't quiet down, be, take it easy guys, just calm down. He goes there while he's facing his back, and so he, he gets shot, he gets shot, and his other mate tries to come and get him, gets shot, and he, it's too late, he dies, he ends up dying. 
um, but his last words, I'm just going to paraphrase it, I'm not going to say in Psalm 1. His last words is, um, my blood was spilt for Psalm 1, I'm proud to give, give to Psalm 1. Um, but he also says that um, if, um, if I die, let me die, but um, but let peace peace must be maintained at any mm. cost. Mm. Yeah, wow. any cost. Wow. I wasn't like, oh, come on, guys, let's just let's kill them, let's retaliate. While well, he's yeah. dying, yeah, yeah. he's saying yeah. stuff. But, yeah, Shucks. which is really sad. And he and he, and he dies. And like, man. So you think of a of a man of that, you know, of that kind of caliber, just and die like that, and with honor, and not like, hey, come on, guys, let's just okay. let's kill these guys. This. Let's retaliate and get our land back. But he, and you think of it, like men like that, men like, oh, just, who um, just exude so much pride, but also humility. Mm. Um, you know, who, you know, I can, I don't know if I could, I, I don't know if I could do that, but oh, you just kill them, just mm. go crazy. And, you know, sometimes we, as Samuels or as Islanders, we see Reed, like, just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but amazing, amazing. Yeah, 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 you're right, Charles, it will be like that. But yeah, that's just the truth yeah. of that. And then you get an apology in two thousand and two, and so mm. and that's what that's what they call a black they call a black Saturday, in December the 29th, 1929. And so yeah, he yeah, pretty sad. Eh? Just the history of nineteen twenty nine. Then Samoa gained the independence nineteen sixty two. Yeah, like thirty three years later. <laughs> that's still like what happened between then. You know, like wow, that's crazy. Yeah. This is some <clears throat> big steps, eh, I think, for closure at least, or for some some kind of. Because um, you're right, what they said is true. Nothing's going to change what happened with these dawn raids mm. mm. and er all the racism and that that's happened, but the bigger steps than I've seen um, in you know, other governments in that take. Yeah. Mm. Man, that's interesting. This is all. It's all new to me, eh? Like, I've heard the words, like, don't mm. read, and I've heard terms, but mm. don't remember ever being taught this in school, and essentially mm. all of my education is just through the system, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Never heard any of this mentioned, never heard any of the... All the names that are mentioned, no idea about them, so it's weird. Not weird, but, like, it's interesting hearing the history and, like... Not really knowing how to feel about it. Like, I know I'm, yeah, I'm brown, I'm Sam. One, I was raised in South Auckland, and yet, like, these stories, are, the, these characters or these people are, like, strangers to me. Mm. And so just yeah. trying to process, like, it should be more meaningful to me, but I feel weirdly disconnected. Mm. Like, mm. Yeah. man. That's me. It's cool. Yeah. Jack. It's cool, Jack. It's, I, feel, uh, I feel cool, you on that. that. That's mm. why I had to pause, like, at the start when I was talking about the Dawn Razor and Polynesian Panthers. I'm speaking from hearsay. Because I, I didn't experience any of that. I decided to check myself and like pull back and I was like, I needed to pass the mic. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm speaking a, uh, of it, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, uh, I was speaking outside of it, but I, I don't think I was showing enough. I don't know. Um, like, uh, empathy, you know? Mm. Where, like, when, when explaining this, I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. Don't don't just share this for the hell of it. Like yeah. share it to educate you know whoever's watching. Mm. Um, so I feel you on that, bro. Because mm. man, I didn't even speak yeah. Samoan. Jay, this yeah. this cool. Yeah. It's interesting because I wasn't taught this in school as well. No, I only no, sort sorry. of mm. learnt about this um, when I went to MIT when I was like studying yeah, at uni. Yeah. But before that, I had no idea. So it's like, like this is some buried stuff here, man. Mm. I mean, if we when if we're going through this now, imagine how many other people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They have been affected by it, not knowing really that their parents or their grandparents yeah. or whatever went through this. I didn't learn this until uni as well, because I had to do a research paper. But when I found out about it, I was angry. Mm. Mm. It like, yeah, it angered me that this was part of our history and that we weren't taught about it. Mm. And then it sort of like pushed me to want to do more for my people and like. Um, really educate our people um, about what's happening and how can we really push each other um, to excel in areas that uh, for so long that we've been looked at as the bottom of the, the heap mm. and mm. Um, and so I guess yeah so I guess as a South Aucklander as a Polynesian 
you know, talking about, <laughs> about Polynesia. <laughs> and it's like trying to um, just empower those around me and educate myself. And but yeah, it's sad that you know that this is this stuff happens. Mm. Mm. So what's the sort of like? What comes next after the apology? So the apology acknowledges <laughs> yeah. that it's happened, but yeah. like, I'm genuinely curious, like, what what sort of? I I doubt honestly, I doubt anything would happen. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know anything. Of, I'm not up to date. Well, what should anything, happen? But, then? Like, well, the, oh, I don't know. I mean, what the, I don't know. What can happen? Really, it's like anything to do with trying to make trying to sort of make up for it. It's gonna be on such a large scale. Like I don't know how you determine that. But also the I guess the the way that they give whatever way they choose yeah. to give it back, it doesn't quite fit like with the the wrongdoing that's happened. Like it does because yeah. it's intergenerational. I'm just, mm. yeah, it's something that's happened way in the past, years later. And so whatever they can do to give back to right this wrong, it's never really gonna connect together yeah. fully. So I'm just, yeah, I don't know, I was just curious. It'd be interesting to see what, yeah. I mean, I don't know, if you guys have ideas you mm. want to send to um <laughs> to Jacinda and Durant, then by all means. What should happen next? What should happen next, after the apology? I think the good thing that's come out of it is that more New Zealanders are talking about this. Mm. Saying, What's the dawn race? Look, look at us, we're talking yeah. about it. Mm. And not all of us have known about it, um, so... It's been acknowledged, and then probably moving forward, how can New Zealand like change things so we're not discriminated against? I mean, mm. the, uh, one simple way is if it's um taught at least taught in social studies in school. I'm just yeah, gonna say because okay. man, I had no idea about this, and if people mm. at least in high school learn about this, then that'd be they're doing a refine yeah. like a, a the curriculum? testing period of like yeah the curriculum for 20, um twenty two. I think so, for 2022, yeah, for next year, they're bringing it in um, for New Zealand history, history but it's, history, yeah. I think, based around Māori in particular, yeah. but I think mm. it'd be cool to, like, yeah. fight to get that these stories, yeah, like, to be part of it, so that every New Zealander, you know, in the future, mm. knows about these stories. Even, and like, even if it's the, the the ethnicities in your school, like, even at Manurio High, we're, like, 80% Pacifica, so, like, it makes sense, we tell Pacifica history mm. to 80% yeah. of the school. Mm. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, telling our stories, man. All right, let's make it happen. Damn. Start their petition. <laughs> Change the <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> Thank you, family, for tuning in. Thank you for sacrificing some of your time to hear some insights from Mandate. If you want to watch the full episode, click the link below or above or on the sides. I'm not too sure where it is. It's attached somewhere. But thank you. Refine and luck. Take charge.